Heat 1 was held in a rare southwesterly, flicking between 10 and 20 knots, and the southerly course was selected. Yendi's with the red anchor, steered by Harold Cudmore, hit the front soon after the start. And led around Clark Island and into the run to Chowder Bay. Yendi's and some of the fleet went wide with starboard poles. Others jibed at Clark and took a more direct line to Chowder Bay. Several boats set ringtails, a relic sail from square rig days extending the leech of the mainsail. After they jibed halfway down, the mistake, 2 plus 2 equals 5, steered by John Woody Winning, had hit the front and was leading approaching the bottom mark at Chowder Bay. Woody decided to granny rather than jibe at the mark, but had to contend with a bit of traffic. No, 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 no. Oh, this could be a mess. This could be a mess. Oh, The rest of the fleet started to bunch up approaching the mark. Australia 4, Tangaluma and Topweight waltzed their way through the giant. The leaders were pretty even at the Shark Island mark. The next leg is usually a shy reach in a southerly, but in the southwester the wind was well ahead of the beam. The mistake began to draw away and was first around the Caraba mark. Yendi's was followed by Australia 4 and then top weight. Yendi's and the mistake turned neck and neck for home at Clark Island. The wind was still just ahead of the beam. With a little flat masthead spinnaker, the mistake was able to keep up to the line, but had to flag the spinnaker to make it. With a peakhead spinnaker, Yendi's got pushed away and had to drop theirs. So the mistake takes out the first heat by 30 seconds from Yendi's. Australia 4 came in for third, and then the rest of the fleet in a bunch. On the morning of heat 2, the fleet rigged in the park expecting a light easterly. All boats set up their number one rigs. The number two east course was selected. Shark and back twice, the second time going via Clark. The fleet of nine boats set off in an eight to 12 knot east northeast breeze. Yendi's red anchor and the mistake with a brand new big mainsail with no insignia hit the front early. Yendi's rounded Shark Island first and set their biggest peak header for the run to Caraba. They'd already opened a big lead on the mistake who rounded second.
Scott rounded in third place, closely followed by Australia 4, Aberdeer and Al Ruth. Britannia, Tangalooma and Topweight formed the rear guard. A lot of north in the breeze, the spinnakers were set quite shy. Britannia set their big ringtail. Good. Pull Wally, pull Wally, pull Wally. And it's set. Yendi's rounded the bottom mark with a clear lead over the mistake. Australia 4 was in third and the rest were bunching up. but gets a bit crowded at times. Al Ruth, Aberdeer and Scott were still close approaching Clark Island, but there was a big gap ahead to the mistake. And another gap to Yendi's. was beginning to drop off, slowing everybody down. Yendi's was first to turn for home and set peak header and ring tail. crossed almost six minutes ahead of the mistake. The mistake was also under peak header and ring tail. were most of the rest of the fleet. A win each for the mistake and Yendi's meant that Heat 3 would be the decider between Woody Winning and Harold Cudmore. The number one Nor'east course was chosen, the 18 footers most traditional course, and the fleet set off in 20 to 25 knot Nor Nor'easter. Yendi's had a brilliant start and cleared away early. And they continued to draw away.
and by the top mark of the Bishul boy had opened up a lead of 1 minute 40 over the mistake. And then set their spinnaker for the square run to Shark Island. Yendi's put up their ringtail, briefly, the only one to make an appearance today. There you go, but incorrect. A ringtail, ladies and gentlemen, is an additional turbo sail that they put up to get them turbo action on their main. Now, if you look at the Yendi's right now, ladies and gentlemen, they're just putting their ringtail up now. See, it dragging the water, and they're going to pull that up, and that's going to be extra sail guarding. Oh, that's serious, that is. So, this is part of the skill here, ladies and gentlemen. The swing tail is going up, we'll jib down first. They take the jib down, and when they move now, you'll see the jib coming down now. You've got to be very cautious that that jib doesn't go in the water. Because it's, uh, it's a bad technical way. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Yendi's had a bit of difficulty with the wake of the Spectator ferry making it difficult to jive, always a dangerous manoeuvre in these craft. Mistake had closed the gap on the run and set off on the shy run to Clark in hot pursuit. Aberdeer dropped their spinnaker before jiving, Alruth dropped, and Granny generally a safer manoeuvre. Stake had taken the lead at the Clark mark. Oh, this is going to be close around the bottom mark. He has rolled him. No, he hasn't rolled him. The rest of the fleet were a whole leg back. The mistake was in front on the work to Chowder Bay. Meanwhile, back at Shark Island, top weight narrowly pulled off their jibe, just behind Australia 4 who also jibed. 
All the boats who carried kites had difficulty with them on this shy reach. Gee, if they could just get that spinnaker on the Australia Four, you would see you would see something something uh, worthy of, uh, of watching because uh, Rob Brown and myself have sailed that boat and it absolutely lights up when you when you get the, when you get it really. Oh shit! Come on, get it down quick. Get it down now. And get back on the. Mistake and Yendis battled it out all the way up to Chowder Bay. But it was Yendis ahead, close to the mark. In the nor nor east breeze, conditions were very difficult approaching Chowder Bay. The mistake, even briefly losing a man overboard. Yendi's rounded first and both crews started working on spinnakers. Yendi's, however, caught their peak head backstay on a sail batten. And a sudden gust ended their race. This deprived the spectators of what would have been a thrilling finish. State now only had to finish to win the race and the series. Abadir had been overtaken by Al Ruth and Australia 4 on the work. Most boats had some difficulty in the gusty conditions. At the far left you can just see Abadir capsizing at the mark. Britannia had to give them a okay, wide berth at the away. mark. Would he played it safe and grannied at Shark? Then set a small mast header to finish. winning the race and the championship. The Mistake also won the Raw Meat Trophy for overall handicap, as well as the Galloping Ghost Trophy for the championship.
And Woody's smile was bigger than Harold's at the presentation. 